Hello everybody, this is Stephen Whitfield, the drilling contractor here at the 2024 IADC SPE International Drilling Conference and Exhibition in Galveston, Texas. And we're just here at the diversity and inclusion session here at the conference and we're here with one of the speakers at that session, Bailey Schwartz of Ever. And they are a geothermal technology company, but we're not going to be speaking about that. We're here at the diversity and inclusion session, so we're going to be speaking about EDI, equity, diversity and inclusion, however, kind of does all of that. So we'll have a little talk here uh, just now. So Bailey, thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks for asking to speak to me. Well, you had a, a wonderful presentation full of gardening metaphors. And I love a good gardening metaphor, but maybe we won't go quite into that part. We'll just talk about some of the key elements of EDI that you discussed in your presentation here tonight. Uh, a couple of things that you brought up initially were sort of the importance of sort of understanding the culture of the company that you're sort of you know, building this culture in, and then also selecting the right people. And so I guess my first question is just to ask about how did those points sort of relate to the experience that you've had at Ever with coming in and helping to find the right people to develop that culture? Yeah, so Ever, we're a technology company and we're doing next generation geothermal technology. So we're really pushing boundaries, trying new things, um, and we need to innovate. And so in order to innovate, we need to be able to foster a space where people can bring ideas forward. And we need as many different perspectives to bring as many new ideas forward as we can. So really having that embedded in our culture, having a lot of diversity of thought, uh, is really crucial to us being successful. Um, in terms of how we've hired, we are a technology company, so really, you know, early on, a lot of the focus was on technical people, people who could do the, you know, do the, the build the models and do the data analysis. Um, as, as we've grown, and we are in a pretty significant growth phase right now, we've had to bring in new sk skill sets, um, different type of people that can help us kind of round out the overall skill sets within our company and, and the overall culture. So it's been a really interesting five years that I've, ha I've spent at Ever. It's definitely been uh, changed a lot year over year in terms of how we've staffed and how we've approached hiring. And ultimately, we want access to the best brains in the world, so we can't restrict ourselves to a narrow labor pool. We just, we need everyone, um, and we need to make sure we're thinking and approaching it um, from an EDI perspective to open, open the access to that labor pool. So another thing that you brought up was the importance of team building exercises, but you also sort of mentioned sort of the challenges for a company like Ever. You've got people working all over the world, Canada, Europe, everywhere. You know, you can't always have everybody in the same place at once to do team building exercises. So sort of how do you, as a company, kind of address that particular challenge? Yeah, right now our headquarters is in Calgary in Canada. Um, and then we've got our, you know, other office in Dusseldorf in Germany. And it, it's been a really big challenge, like having, uh, having the two teams figuring out how to work together, not to mention we kind of built that team during COVID. So we were forced to do a lot of it over, over Zoom, over video conferencing. Um, I think the ideal scenario is you get everyone face to face together, you know, building that trust, building those relationships. The reality is that we are a startup company too and it's expensive to be flying people back and forth. Um, so we've got, been creative with how we approach it. Uh, we try and do boots on the ground. We're building our project every Europe in Germany right now. So we're definitely sending a lot of our technical team over to support that effort, which is helping to, to um, you know, align the cultures and, bu and build those relationships. Um, but it's something that we, that we do continue to work on and, and it's something that will um, you know, as we're expanding Everloops globally, we're going to have offices not just in Calgary and Germany, so we're going to need to figure out the best way to approach that and to really build those relationships. I will bring in one gardening metaphor that you mentioned here, because it's probably the best way to, to lead into this last question, the importance of pruning and picking the weeds when you're making, when you're trying to keep that garden going. You said that this is one of the biggest challenges that you face, you know, when you're trying to build uh, a culture within your company, sort of combating biases. Just like you pick weeds in a garden, you have to pick out the biases that you have within yourself and within the company. So what makes that so challenging? Well, I think it takes a lot of introspection for people and um, 
you know, it, it's really it really is the hardest part because it's uncomfortable to have to look at yourself and understand where you have weak points, um, and it's uncomfortable to have to deliver that feedback to other people if you if you see it, you know, in a team member, um, in a in a direct report. Um, I, I talked about pruning being being able to identify and combat biases and then picking weeds as getting rid of corruption. That's really how I look at it. Like picking weeds, even when you're gardening, it's hard to know, you know, at the beginning if it's a weed or not. Um, you need, it takes time. You have to put a lot of thought into, can we approach this differently? I think if there's blatant things like corruption or harassment, you need to deal with that efficiently and quickly or else it can contaminate the greater culture and have a, a huge impact at a company. Um, but the biases, like, I think everybody does have biases. It's not, it's not a secret. Um, most people are aware that there are things that they can think about and approach differently. And people are pretty open, in my experience, to receiving that feedback. And as long as it's you know, done tactfully and being coached and, and learning how to, how to think differently and embrace people's ideas more openly. And uh, so I think it really is a, a necessary thing to do for the overall success of the company. And we're all here for the company to be successful. So people are open to that. Well, Bailey, thanks again for providing this perspective uh, on diversity and inclusion and equity. And it's fascinating to sort of hear how everybody sort of approaches this. And it's fascinating to hear how you approached it. So thank you. Thank you. And thank you for visiting Drilling Contractor. <laughs>